if you're like me, you don't really like these kinds of uh, chibi, cutesy sprites, and I'm here to show you how to take these and turn them into something cooler, like this. Uh, just a little more interesting, even though I am not really very good at doing pixel art. Uh, I'm gonna show you how I made these bases for male and female characters, and how to work smarter and not harder. So first of all, I highly recommend this site. Um, I am not a pixel artist. I actually suck at pixel art, I'm just learning. But um, I like to go here, this is the Spriters resource, and you can go here. Um, they also have the Textures resource where, like, uh, for example, you know, you can look at the textures of video games and it's really fun to kind of just browse and see what there is. But uh, when I was on this, I came across Sui Coden 2, which I've never played, and I instantly fell in love with this art style. I was just like, these uh, character sprites are great. I love this style it would be perfect for rpg maker look at this little dog guy it's awesome now as someone who doesn't know how to do pixel art i was like how can i copy this style well it's actually not too hard so i brought those characters into a sprite and um just to kind of see what i was working with and uh, i was able to create these bases by doing this so i literally broke pieces of the character off and separated the head, the torso, and the legs. And then I made a nude base for the character from that. And literally, I just went through here and I just used a color picker to pick the skin. And then I just started kind of like erasing and then filling in the shading and, you know, like getting rid of this bandana thing and just getting it to the point where I was like, okay, we've got a base character. Now, I don't consider this doing pixel art. I think this is kind of cheating. So, um, you know, just keep that in mind. But if you're just starting out and you want to do something, that's that's how I did it. I was able to make multiple male bases and females. And I'm working on a little Daria fan game just for practice um, and for this tutorial channel. So I can show you guys how to do a couple things. But as you can see, I was able to just put clothes over the bases. And the reason you make the nude base is because you save the nude base on its own and then you can go in and you can like draw a shirt. Um, let me get a color palette loaded. So um, he's naked as you can see. So let, let's give him a, a little bit of underwear. So on a new layer. Now, now here's the thing. Um, so you see we've got light, medium, and dark shades. Just whatever color you're using, match it to that. So Let's say we're giving him boxer shorts. We're gonna do that. And then here, we're gonna go to the next darker blue. And then we're gonna do any pieces that use that color. And then we're gonna go to an even darker blue and fill in all of the darker spots. And I missed one right here. And now if you look at this little preview or look at him right there, now he's wearing, oops, forgot another spot. Now he's wearing shorts. And that's how you can make clothes for any character and you can turn it on and off. So if you can imagine hair, clothes, shoes, um, typically what I do is, um, if you look here, oh, I guess I didn't do it on this one, but I, I typically keep everything in folders. So tops, bottoms, shoes, hair, all that stuff is on its own uh, category. And then you kind of end up creating a character maker database over time. Now. This style may not work for you, it's what worked for me, but there's one last thing I need to tell you. Um, there is a little bit of math involved and it's gonna get a little weird to explain, so just uh, just bear with me. Now, the way that RPG Maker works, uh, this is how the characters have to be laid out on their sheets. Um, the top row is facing down, and then you have facing left, facing right, and facing up, with each one on the side being them taking a step uh, with alternating legs. Uh, the, the animation is very limited in RPG Maker, which doesn't look great, but the good news is you don't have to make that many sprites. And a lot of times you can just flip them. Um, typically what I do, for example, um, I'm gonna take the whole model with me, but if you can imagine I'm just moving his clothes, uh, I move him all the way to here, and then that's where I will fill in like the spots of the hair and, and just whatever needs to be changed, I'll edit it. And it saves you a lot of work because for the most part, it already aligns. 
But yeah, if you look at the characters here, this is how you can just kind of determine. So you see facing down, left, right, up. That's just the way RPG Maker works. Okay, so this is a 48 by 48 grid. In uh, RPG Maker MV and MZ, which is what I'm using, uh, one square is typically 48 pixels. Now, to make your character a little taller, you want them bigger than this. If I was to put this straight into the engine, she would be the same size as these guys. So she'd be really, really tiny. So just to just to visualize this so you guys can see what I'm talking about, because this is confusing. If I put her in here, see how she's the same size as that character? That's too small, because now it's kind of weird, because then all the props in the environment are going to be gigantic. But um, if this is 200%, which is twice as big, and now I copy her and put her in here, now she's two characters tall, which is just a lot better. I don't recommend going bigger than this because you're going to have a lot of issues. I know everyone wants to make really tall characters, but you have to remember not only does your environment now have to be as big as them, which essentially means you're going to have to make all your own assets, but there's also going to be collision problems and other stuff. So I, I don't recommend going bigger than that. Now, the magic size that you want for, for what you're seeing here where you just want like a, a base if you're doing something like this. 144 by 192. This is the magic number. Now this is going to give you characters the normal size, so they're gonna be tiny, but again, just make it 200% bigger and put that in the engine and it'll look great. And the reason that I do this is because RPG Maker needs everything to be in exact numbers. And you may be wondering, why don't I just make a bigger sprite like this? Well, it's going to create a lot more work for you because if you look, now my one pixel size is now actually four. So four pixels to one. It's a, uh, If I need to edit something, this becomes a lot more work. And yeah, so I just, I'd like to work on it this big because I can easily do these little pixel edits. And then once I'm happy with it, I blow it up to 200% and then that's when it goes into the engine. Now, just to show you, what this looks like actually in the engine. I've also made a couple assets in the background. So this is all very much under construction, but you can see this is a lot more visually appealing already than the standard RPG Maker, you know, character graphics. I don't know, I dig it. It's, it's got like Game Boy Color vibes. <laughs> now, one last thing that I need to mention because of the way RPG Maker works, you need to put a dollar sign before the name of whatever it is you're putting out there. Um, this is so that RPG Maker knows that it's it's bigger than normal sprites and everything has to be sized exactly. If it's not, it won't work. You're gonna have problems. So um, expect that because it happens sometimes even when everything seemingly is correct. But there you go, that was just a quick video. Um, uh, I'm, I'm working on this little Daria fan game because I wanted to make something to show you guys that I actually do know how to use RPG Maker. I just realized I've never released a proper game. And if I'm going to do this tutorial channel, I think it's important that I show you guys that I kind of know what I'm doing. So yeah, but um, I'm, I hope that video helps and uh, go go to this writer's resource and see if you can find an art style that you like and just try try making your own character in a sprite style that you enjoy and, and see how it turns out. I guarantee you it'll be a little more fun than you think. But uh, I'm gonna end this video here, so good luck and I hope your sprites turn out great.